Today's feature highlights a group that epitomizes what second to none really means. This group called themselves Nolly Secundus and they focus mainly on youth empowerment. Today we have some members of the group here who will share with us some of the work done with the group in addition to what they think um, we could expect from this group. So right over to them and I'll go straight to the Vice President, Ms. Tiffany Davis. Hello, Delicia. Um, Nolly Secundus means second to none, it's Latin, and this year Nazicandus will be celebrating 10 years since our existence, and it's interesting how we really started because we really started as a group of young people who were having a difficult time adjusting to church life, graduating or being promoted from the children church setup, and we really started as a result of that. Pastor Lee, who's our coordinator, he was tasked with meeting with us and helping us to adjust to going over to our adult services. And eventually what happened is, I think he recognized that he was sitting on a gold mine, and a gold mine, and he, the vision for Nolisi Kandas actually changed. So it was no longer just a group to help us acclimatize to a sort of church service, but it became what it is today, okay. which is a youth group, which facilitates the development of our youth, because we recognize our youths are the future leaders of Guyana, and a lot of what we're involved in, as you rightly said earlier, is youth empowerment, development, and growth. Okay, so as a result of this group being established, what are some of the objectives or what is the main purpose and goal of the group? Well, like I pointed out earlier, the objective is actually to mold and to mentor our youth. We are divided into various segments or mini groups which are career oriented. We have lawyers, we have people who are interested in international relations, doctors, scientists, engineers, just to name a few. And education therefore plays a big part in what we do and what we encourage because like I said, we're grooming leaders for the future and we believe leaders should be qualified, leaders should be informed, leaders should be knowledgeable and that is what we strive to do at Not the Second Us. Okay, so what age range do you facilitate in this group? We start from 13 to as old as 26. However, our coordinators and his assistants, they're much older, but the youths, the, the eldest youth, that is there is 26. Okay, so um, how long has the group been established? How many years? Mm -hmm. 10 years. So within the past 10 years, would you be able to highlight some of the impacts that you could say that you are, you're seeing as a result of this group being est established like within the group itself, the community at large, some of the things that people have benefited from as a result of this group? Okay, as part of our initiative, we're involved in community service or community projects. One, for example, and this is the one I think so far that I'm most proud of, is that we rehabilitated a school library already. And of course I'm proud of it because education is a big deal. And all schools aren't exactly exposed to first class libraries. So we were privileged to rehabilitate the library of school, Freeburg Secondary School and they now have a working functioning space where students can go, read, have time to relax, do their research and so forth. To date, we've also done some work further afield. For example, on our expedition, Expedition Cinderella, we were able to paint the culverts while we were there because, in Letem, because the accident rate was reasonably high there. So now the Secondus was a part in that movement to have those culverts paint so the drivers could see see that. We've also done outreaches to senior citizens' homes. For example, on Father's Day, we were able to go just to spend some time 
with the elderly, let them know that we appreciate them. They've gone before us. So we had a, a mini concert. We were able to socialize and chat with our older folk. Okay, Tiffany. So um, you've been sharing, uh, uh, giving us some comprehensive history of the group and, as, and what they do and stuff like that. So I want to go straight into the exhibition expedition since you started talking about it. And I want to, um, if you would be able to share with us or another member of the team would be able to tell us why we do these expeditions and, you know, around what time of the year and, you know, just give us that kind of, that kind of information. Well, we usually carry out our, execute our expeditions in August, mainly because our group has students as well as people who are employed. And that's the perfect time since school breaks during that time. So we usually go. We believe that to be a leader, you have to be informed. So seeing Guyana and what Guyana is, seeing different cultures, we're able to appreciate different cultures. We're able to see how people outside of the coastland live. We're able to see what they experience. We're able to see what they're faced with. And aside from that, we get to tour and see what Guyana is really all about. You know, instead of going maybe to North America, we get to see what Guyana really is, which is more than what the coastland provides. Okay, so, and I think this question should be directed to the treasurer. You're still the treasurer? Yeah. Just briefly, if you could tell us how are these expeditions made possible in terms of fundraisers and things like that? Um, well, every year leading up to the expeditions, we do several fundraisers. You have movie nights, games night, um, barbecue, fish fry. And the aim of the fundraisers is so that when the expedition comes, persons don't have to pay a lump sum of money. It helps to ease the stress of how much you have to pay to win this. Most times the money that a person would have to pay would be <coughs> 6000 mm -hmm. I know for a last year trip, because of our fundraisers, the money went down and each person had to pay 50000 yeah. 50000 to go on the trip. Okay. Okay, so with a bit of focus on 2017's, ex 2017's exploration, I want to focus on some different parts, but I want to start, first of all, with the community work that you did and what you did to contribute to community development in the areas that you've been to. So, any one of you can share that with me. Um, so, basically, we visited Aishalton, and Aishalton was, like, our main place. So, we... Um, Every time we went out during the day to do stuff, visit the other communities and do our work, we came back straight to Aishalton. So we decided to do our community work right in Aishalton. And what we did there, there was an airstrip that had a, a lot of grass. And, you know, because of the strong, um, hardworking young men in the group, we decided, you know, um, we could, we could weed down this place and make it look more presentable and um, enhance the uh, surrounding, I should say. So um, we had some assistance from the a deputy to show and she brought some tools for us and uh, guys and even some of the ladies, we um, helped cut down some grass and that was our main um, community work for the entire trip and that was based in Aishalta. Okay, so how did the community receive you guys? I mean, some people coming from town, you know, the culture is different. How did they receive you? Well, that was a bit easy, I think, because we, um, we had long before we even visited the community, um, Pastor De Silva, who is a pastor at First Assembly, and he lives there. So, he prepared basically everything before we went. So the night when we reached to the village, there were um, persons there just waiting, clapping for us. We heard some songs and, and, and all of those things. So we were, um, we were received very well. We were treated very well. Um, we ate as much as we can, you know. <laughs> the usual stuff. So um, the villagers, they were very, very nice to us. We couldn't say anything about that. 
Okay, so the next question is an open question. I want to ask anybody in the team if they're willing to share. Apart from the community work that you went to do in Region 9, I know it's not your first time in Region 9, but it's a, you, went, you went to Deep South. How was it for you, the experience for you? Could you tell us, you know, was it like a difference for you? Were you excited? Was it challenging? It's an open question, and I'll start with anybody. I'm not pointing out anybody. Well, this was my second expedition because I missed the previous one in 2016. And in that expedition, we visited most of the villages in Letem. We visited the area in Letem. But this year, we went deep south to Aishalton, which was an entirely different from, I, from what I expected. Because going there, I expected the persons to be in the tribal wears with their arrow and bows and the, stuff, the spears just with the painters on the skin. But they were just dressed like an average person. Oh, yes. Um, for me, I didn't expect the persons to be that hospitable to us because they hadn't seen... Um, someone told us that it was the first time the village had seen so many Negroes in the area. So I didn't expect them to be open. But when we got there, the hospitality was not a second, it was second to none. <laughs> right? So we got there, the persons were waiting because the person from the church, they interacted with us. We played volleyball, we played football competitions. Because remember, they're always in this community, they don't really travel. So persons from the outside coming in, it was like a great opportunity for them and for us. Because personally, let them is the trip to Aishelton was about 12 hours because we reached at let them we left let them at about 10 we reached about 10 in the night so we traveled for about 12 hours the road was terrible because imagine 18 persons in the back of a truck with goods in the back there with you having to sit on a bumpy road and every time we hit a hole you're lashing your head and it's for like 10 minutes straight, you're driving, lashing your head. Then when we <laughs> made the first village, we parked back, got on the road, gone again. Then the dust flying in your face, covering up. And then when your legs get tired, you want to stand up. So when you stand up and you're holding on, you're getting corn in your hand out. So it, that was all a part of the experience that made this memorable for me. That was just some of the things that I would like to highlight about it. Okay. Is there anybody else? For me, this was my first time at, on the trip, and it helped me personally to change the distorted image I have of Guyana's beauty. And it also played a great role as to which it gave you a mental strength because during the journey there were a lot of challenges, and we embraced and drew them. The other part is when I went to Aishalton, I saw wells like almost everywhere, and I was surprised, I was excited to use it because you know it's so primitive. Yeah, so when I saw it, I was like, I couldn't wait to go and use this well and pull up the water. And so, <laughs> so, yeah, and the people were very nice. I was surprised also. They were very nice to us, and I would encourage anyone to go there. Okay, brilliant. Okay, one of our accomplishments was uh, to climb the Shia Rock. I can recall in 2015, our expedition, we climbed the Kanuku mountain range. So as we were approaching the Shear Rock, I thought to myself that it's not much to climb, that's just the rock, because I climbed the mountain. But as we were approaching the rock, I realized that this is not as easy as it may seem. So I find that sometimes we might look at something as minor, but it can be a great challenge. And for this group, I've learned, and on the expeditions in the past, that we may have challenges, and it's all about overcoming them. And so in the expeditions, we, our focus may be even along with the community work and so on to overcome some of our challenges and difficulties and so on. So for me, I've grown and uh, we made it to the top of the Shia Rock. And uh, up there we were able to place a plaque with our name and uh, the persons who were on the expedition. So I would like to say to the persons listening out there that um, 
our our group has uh, taught us, you know, that even though we have challenges and these things it's okay to face your challenges it's okay to be a part of community work as young people you're never too young to be involved and to be a part of um, what the nation has and i've seen guyana i traveling to latem i've seen a lot of uh you know, land as far as the eyes can see. And I know that in Georgetown, we are here and we, a lot of people, we, we are saying that we're comfortable with what we have here. But when you go out there to the other parts of Guyana, you see, you begin to see that Guyana, Georgetown is not all that Guyana has. And the beauty of Guyana is when you leave Georgetown of itself. So I have grown to appreciate Guyana more and see that Guyana is not just about Tom alone. And we do have more to offer than what we might see as now. Okay, thank you. I want to give the others an opportunity to share their experiences, so I'm going to move on to Shamika and then we're going to come down the line. Okay, to add to what Prudence um, just said, when I reached at the rock and I looked at the height of the rock, I was like, how are we climbing that rock? So I began climbing the rock, you know, at the bottom was easy because I'm a very athletic person going up and so on, but to emphasize on teamwork. Well, uh, when we reached the middle of the rock, Tiffany, Seanette, oh my god, and David was there with me. So I was climbing and I you know, started getting sweaty. I was like, oh gosh, no, I ain't climbing anymore. I'm <laughs> sitting right here, y'all go, y'all go, go, y'all go, I am sitting here. And then um, David was like, no, Shemika, come on, come on, we need to go, we need to go. Because he was like my buddy, we look out for each other. And we climb, and we climb, we climb, we stop, we climb, we stop, then pass. He was there with us. I was like, Parsley, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't go past. He said, no man, we got to go, we got to go. Motivating, we got to go. So I could remember at the point of time while we were sitting, I was like questioning, you know, Parsley, like how we how we coming down this rock? But Parsley didn't um, answer me. I could remember Charlotte even asked Parsley, Daddy, you even think you even think before you bring these people cheering on this? <laughs> what was in your mind? What was in your mind? You thank you for bringing this future in here, but I, we reached the top, we made it, and I, that was a great achievement for me, you know, just to, after I was reflecting to think you climbed a 676 feet rock, that was very huge for me. And then when we finished, I remember Parsley saying, Shumika, you see, I didn't answer your question, so we reached down. Yeah, it was really nice, it was really nice, and I could remember going to different villages, one village, one village went to... I, I can remember we go going and one of the ladies, she like just reached out her hand and started hugging me. I didn't expect that to happen. I was like, and I was very, very happy to see the smiles on their faces, you know, all of them going, talking, looking that good. Yeah, it was really nice. Great. Nairon? Um, for me, this exhibition has certainly been quite a blast. Um, if I can touch or start from the scenery, um, my colleague and um, Shamal stressed on how bumpy the ride was, but at the same time, I think the group as a whole um, still remain alert or look at the scenery, um, the whole landscape of the Rokunumi. I think what makes the expedition a little bit different from last year's expedition is the fact that they were most of vinyl and because of the low grassland, it really allowed us to challenge ourselves to see as far as I can see the beauty of the amazing day, uh, and um, if I could head right over to the land availability, one could definitely sure be impressed. Um, the huge potential there is for not only tourism but also agriculture. Um, in the region nine, one of the primary source of income would be farming, and the Amerindians usually cultivate uh, mainly the crop cassava. And I could show you from research and as an agriculture major. The Rapunini haven't cultivated half of the land that is available for them. So you could just imagine the potential there is for agriculture. And um, for the lifestyle or the way of life for the Amerindians, it's certainly quite a difficult one for them. I certainly was a little bit disappointed, or to myself, or a little bit 
sad the fact that, you know, in Tongue he complain a lot, but 13 days in the life of an Ambrindian has really been quite a challenging one, you know. And after some the villages in Tilsi, like for example, Arona, um, you notice immediately that there isn't any fancy houses or inside of houses isn't the, the fancy furniture that you probably found in course or slingers. So at that point, I was certainly overwhelmed. Um, but the whole gratitude and appreciation for whatever you have. I mean, a very strict person would well. No one's quite a joy, it's true for all of us. Uh, but I have to ask the question imagine doing this three, six, twelve months after, would I still have the joy? So yeah. I've missed the well indeed, but I think I'll stay with pipe system for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely been quite challenging. I remember past the silver was telling us that it was an old lady, I believe she was about 70 years old. She usually get up early in the morning or work miles to a farm, then have to work and walk by the same distance. She's usually like five in the morning and return back like six. So it's very, it's very challenging. Even though the bus system, you know, flat like a bus and go down the yard to walk. I mean, we saw some of them use the ATP, you know, like, but she wasn't one of those um, fortunate ones. Um, overall, I think Region 9 is certainly the food bowl of the nation. And I think we, what made us so special was, so some of the things that we did was so special was a simple thing as a volleyball and a football. This really meant a lot to you. I mean, you can see the, the whole giant face is light up. I mean, these persons, they're, they're really left on their own, to be honest. You can notice that this road has been traveled a lot, and they were really surprised to see a bunch of people as well, you know. But in, um, in closing, I'd like to encourage those who haven't been through Benoni, certainly um, shake a giant or put it as one of your goals. You certainly won't regret it, I can assure you. Thank you. Thank you, Nairon. Tiffany? I know everybody spoke about the Shira, the Shira, because it was a big deal. It was my biggest uh, achievement was getting to the top of Shira. It was 676 feet tall. Now, I was the last person to get to the top. And I look at me, I don't climb rocks. <laughs> However, it was steep and we had to get over there. At one point, I recall throwing myself on the rock. It was very dramatic. It was a very dramatic experience. <laughs> I recall throwing myself on the rock. Nairon here had to get my water and all that just to get me to the top. But the teamwork that I experienced, I remember Sean, it was like, come Tiffany, we could do it. Well, I'm not a quitter. And that's how I made it to the top because I think I would have regretted stopping halfway. So I had to get to the top. But Sean was with me. She was, no, Tiffany, we got to continue. And at one point I was like, no, 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 yeah, just leave me and come back here. But then I would not have been proud of myself. I remember Nairon, he had to give me my water and all that. And he even used my brother, who's on Sony Exhibition, his experience in terms of getting up to the top of the rock. Because my brother has more size and he's stocky, he's built. And he was able to make it to the top of the rock. So I was like, definitely I'm not the rock. And Something that I learned from climbing a rock, because it had some very steep points, was that any challenge that you're faced with, or any situation that you're faced in life, or anything that you want to achieve, you really can achieve it if you will it. Like, if you're determined in your mind, because it was a mind thing. Because going up on the rock, anytime I looked up to the top of the rock, I felt as though I couldn't do it. And that was my mind. So I learned that anything that you're determined to do, you can get done. So any dream or goal that we have, despite the obstacles, if we really want to get it done, I believe we can, based on my experience in climbing that rock. Some yes. other highlights to me uh, was I was able to assist to making for me. That's the main well, dish really that they use we were there. there. To it's like equivalent to rice, like how we use rice on here with everything, they use farine with so everything. But farine is a bit different, look at the green one. So I was able to stir the farine and all that, and it's hard work just to get some farine. As it relates to and the other expeditions, because some that they have to give and it's still exact information on the expeditions, but once there's an hour, we will be having an expedition. So we have to last for me. And it's a lot of yeah. hard work. Next Something that I also did, I learned to ride next year. an ATV. Something I'd never be able to do in town because my mother dislikes 
both bikes. So I took the opportunity of the year and I was able to master the ATV. For myself. I was also able to ride a horse again, something I would not do it though. So I appreciated the fact that we were able to do so many things that ordinarily we wouldn't get to do. And I think we need to appreciate what we have here in Georgetown because the life that the Amarillians have to lead is a very challenging life. But something that hit home to me or that was impressed upon me on the trip, well, I know there are developed countries that may have underdeveloped areas. What struck, reached, what stayed strong with me is that I think as young people, we have to hone our skills and become qualified, qualify ourselves. Because I think Guyana has a far way to go and there's a lot to be done in Guyana. And it can only be done, I believe, by people who are ready to take the challenge, people who are going to qualify themselves and prepare themselves to be a part of such movement. Okay, as we're um, going against time, I wanna give everybody an opportunity to just briefly share continue to share their experiences on the trip. So I'll just move through this side and then we're going to move on to closing off the program. My experience on the expedition of Apushiyama Wave, it was quite thrilling. It was enthusiastic. It was also challenging. Dealing with the terrain, moving from village to village, you had the opportunity to see the beauty, the nature of the interior savanna. It was something, it was a sight for soul right now. That kind of environment, it can change your life. My encounter with the Shira, it, it challenged me to move forward. Halfway there, I had to deal with fear. And I thought about turning back, thought about giving up. But what I did, that strengthened me. In dealing with that issue, it gave, it gave me the strength to move forward. So that was a wonderful experience. Another highlight that we had was the petroglyphs. Those are historic rocks that were created or Scribed by the local, the Amerindians, and it was quite thrilling. We got to see so many different places, so many different beautiful rocks, and I learned a lot. It allowed me to grow. My the way I think now has significantly changed because I encounter life within the interland. It by no stretch of the imagination it is easy, but anyone wants to give the opportunity can change your life. And your future. <laughs> My experience on this expedition is quite life changing. Um, seeing Guyana and its pristine beauty in the Savannah area, deep south Kununi, was very, it was, as I said before, life changing. Um, this is now my first expedition, but the highlight of this expedition was for me it was climbing the Shira and when, when I visited the Makamaka Falls. Now, it's the first time for me at the waterfalls. It was like heaven, <laughs> heaven and waterfall and you, and it was like a scary way <laughs> climbing up and like, I've never done that before, but climbing the sheer rock was hard, as my colleague said before. I remember halfway going up, I was with Tiffany's brother, Joshua, and <laughs> we, ha we had to encourage one another to go up the rocky thing. At one point, well, an Aubrey oh, yeah. was there, <laughs> and we had to encourage one another to go up this rock. We were like, one point I say, if I go up this rock, how am I coming down? Pass the rock or some helicopter or something and collect me any time because I don't know how, how I'm coming up. It was so steep. It was so steep, and I told myself, I challenged, it was like, yeah, it was a my thing, like Tiffany said. If you stop and you like think, look up, and you get frankly, you would want to come down or you want to stay right here. But once you tell yourself you can do it, you're gonna make it. I told myself, I have to go up to this rock. I have to make it. And once I said that, like energy kick in, one straight run up, and that was it. <laughs> that was the fourth female to make it up to the top of the rock. So. This experience of life changing, I would encourage anyone out there to visit the interior of your life will never be the same. Um, since everyone is talking about the she rock, that was challenging for me. I mean, I looked at the rock while we were driving 
I was like, man, this is nothing. Exactly. Because we because I climbed Shamrock Peak, like what is this saying? And I was like, man, this is gonna be breeze. This is not me that just one straight go up. Because I honestly thought we were going to be up there like in 15 minutes. Yeah. So starting the journey going up, I remember Tiffany was my partner and my buddy Imani. The three of us, we were walking there, and then I realized my mouth getting dry. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, this, every time I look up, I keep saying, oh, we almost there, we almost there. And every time I reach the almost there, it's like, oh, wait, we still have a month. But it was something, um, it was something worth, for, worth it for me because I'm very scared of heights. So going on that rock, laying on the grass around me that even fall, could probably cushion it. So it was really challenging for me to go up that rock. But like I was, when we were almost there, I was like, no, so much of people up there and then my father might shame, like, he thought they would reach up the mountain. Like, that's enough. <laughs> and then when I looked at my run, I'm like, if I find here, we talk, it's not like nothing. I'm like, nah, I gotta make it. So, and then I remember I was struggling with Omega before. I was like, Omega, you gotta redeem yourself. And so when Omega made it, I was like, I made it up. So I'm like, I gotta go this wrong. But it was hard. But I made it up. And even when I was thinking about it, I remember when I told my students, we look at problems that are so big and we say that we can't conquer them. But you have you have to push yourself and actually look at the rock could be so big or the problem could be so big but it's actually small. But you could overcome anything. <laughs> Another thing about the trip that arrested me is the terrain. This ride was horrible. I've been on all the expeditions, but the drive was never so hurtful or so intense. Because at one point I couldn't even feel my butt <laughs> because of all the bumps on this ride. Now, I remember a time when, it was a couple of days ago when we were driving, I think it was myself and Tiffany, and I drive over a bump and I was like, wait, I actually drive over a bump? Because you didn't even feel it. Because <laughs> compared to in the interior, <laughs> these bumps are like just little rocks you're driving over. Yes. Um, but besides the terrain, Looking at the land, it's really beautiful. I remember when we were leaving Aishalton, going back to Letem, the sunset was, not the sunset, the sunrise. sunrise was amazing. Because yeah. looking at it, I was like, wow. I felt so close to it, but it was like, wow. So looking at it, because remember, there's not much houses. Even down to the night when we were leaving, you saw all the stars. In town, you won't see all of that because of all the lights, the traffic, everything. So I think this trip by far was one of the best trips. Also socializing with one another. I look forward to the socialization on the trip, okay. talking with different persons. And this year we had a lot of new persons, so I got to see the different personalities. And it also helps you as an individual because you constantly dealing with people one way. And then you realize everyone is not the same. You have to actually take the time to learn people, learn how they are. So yeah, that was just one of the couple of the highlights in the trip. Okay, and finally, Aubrey. Well, um, to start with, I'll say the vision statement, which says to facilitate spiritual, economical, social, and physical growth of tomorrow's leader. And uh, um, what the trip is meant to do is a part of it is meant to challenge each and every one of us and another part of it was meant to um, you know to be very exciting to be very thrilling something that you would look forward to and um, the very challenging part of the trip I wouldn't say it's the rock I would say it's the terrain like like Shannon said um, for me, things got black and blue. <laughs> <laughs> to be literal, things got black and blue. Um, the terrain was one of the roughest things because, I mean, every day um, throughout one week, we had to go to different villages during the day. And those villages were four hours away, six hours away, every day. 
and there were no cushion, no sponge, nothing you could like, grab onto to sit. So it was just metal and you. <laughs> right? Literally, it was just metal and you. Um, the rock was very amazing. I really liked really like that that experience um me and prudence going up she you know she stopped halfway that rock was very steep the mountain was was steep but not as steep as the rock mm -hmm. um you could literally sit and look right between your foot and you were looking <laughs> straight down to the ground like 607 six feet downwards that was how steep was the rock. It was almost as, as if you were on a wall. That, and uh, um, that was one of the most frightening things about the rock. Um, for I Shelton, I really took away the history um, from the Amerindians there. Because um, there's a plant called the Aishartu, which the Amerindians used to um, throw in the water and they stun, stun the fish. So the fish just basically floats up to the top and they just pick them up and, and eat. So um, I'm using that as a starter for my final year project and I'm putting it out here. So um, that would help me with my major, just like um, Nairam, I'm major in agriculture science. So um, that is one of the best things that happened for me. Um, I didn't get to go to Bon well, Boa Vista with the rest of the team because, you know, and I enjoyed myself in Letham B and uh, and my friend. So <laughs> um, the the meat of the trip, I would say, it was that one week traveling up and down to all those different villages, meeting um, those people so comfortable and satisfied with what they have, which was very little, and uh, I grew a great appreciation for water. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. A wonderful appreciation for water. And so um, I'll use that to conclude what I have to say. Thank you, and I'm glad that you could share to that extent, all of you could share to that extent your experience. But before we close, I just want to ask one more thing, and I think I will direct it back to Tiffany. Uh, what are some of the future plans for Nali Secundus in terms of expanding? Are you going to do any more community work or anything of that sort? Yes. Uh, one of the things I can recall at the top of my head, while we were in Nathan, we were able to get some information about a group of there who wants to start a library. So one of the first things that we have slotted since we came back is to donate some books so they can get that project started there in Lithium. As it relates to other expeditions, I can't give you exact information on expeditions, but once there's an August, we will be having an expedition. So we have to just regroup and plan the next activities that we have for the next year. It's so Nalisa Gundas, let me thank you once again for sitting with us and sharing your experiences on the trip and so and I hope Guyana does look forward to benefiting so much more from Nali Secundus and I personally do look forward to hearing so much more from Nali Secundus. Thank you. Thank you for watching.